Good morning and welcome. This is the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Thank you for joining us for worship. The bulletin is found on our website, stjohncarnegie.com, so please follow along. While you're there, you can subscribe to our email newsletter if you don't get it yet. Speaking of our email newsletter, we announced this week we will be having Holy Communion outside. We're going to be having a service at the prayer garden at our cemetery out Noblestown Road. That's going to be two weeks from today. Please RSVP. We need to have a list of people who will be coming so we can plan for how many people we're going to have and so we can also ensure appropriate contact tracing should that become necessary. There's a sign-up sheet through the email newsletter or you can call the office if you don't have access to the internet. As we have all summer, we continue to offer lunch to local children. Anyone under the age of 18 can get lunch Monday through Friday from 12 to 1. We have groceries available on Fridays. I will be out of the office this week. Pastor Alina Kanaski is on call for pastoral emergencies, and the office can get you in touch with her if need be. We'll have a moment of silence before we begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we, we confess, confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Your sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope. For hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A 
reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to the word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who precede you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read verses of Psalm 89 in unison. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your steadfast love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly our shield belongs to the Lord, our King to the Holy One of Israel. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then should we sin because we are not under law but under grace? By no means. Do you, know, do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Our text 
from Paul's letter to the church in Rome has lots of big ideas about grace and law and sin and freedom. The bottom line of it seems to be this. You are going to be enslaved to something. Slavery language is hard, or at least it should be hard. We know that slavery is a tragedy and a crime. We know that in our country we continue to grapple with its legacy. And it was part of the accepted worldview of the human authors of the Bible, a metaphor like any other. The Bible, one theologian commented, is the word of God, but it is not necessarily the wording of God. In scripture we find the truth, but it is not an infallible text given to infallible people. Slavery was an unquestioned part of that world. Now, the idea of binding human persons in suffering and pain to serve the economic interests of a few, that is as clear an example of being a slave to sin as I can think of. It is to give up moral freedom to reject our calling in baptism to honor God and God's people. Now, in our world, as we continue to grapple with the legacy of slavery in our country, how poverty imprisons and suffocates, how the impact of the current pandemic is so disproportionately landing on people of color in our country, it feels like we are all caught up in sin even before we sit down to breakfast. Like there is a snare of violence that we cannot escape. Now many of us have the privilege to look away, a dangerous, if understandable, inclination. No one wants to think about the suffering of others, certainly not faced with the sin and violence of our own apathy. This, though, this is where I think there's a deep hope in our scripture for today. Paul tells us, receive the free gift of God, eternal life, as we dedicate ourselves to God. To be enslaved to God, to choose bondage to freedom, being bound in those promises and salvation of baptism, that makes us free. This is the grace of Jesus Christ that frees us from sin even as we sin, because Jesus has taken the evil we participate in and released it, us from it. We are freed in Christ even as we still feel stuck in sin, both our own personal sins and those we are enmeshed in as a society. <clears throat> now, it tends to be that one of the ways we feel so stuck is that we think about those big social sins, the big bad of racism or sexism or the destruction of the environment. We look at those and then we get lost in our own individual stories. We insist defensively, well, I'm not racist, I'm not sexist. We cleverly focus on ourselves rather than the bigger issue at hand. We then intentionally close our eyes to bigger problems that perhaps could be addressed if only the will to do so existed. We tell ourselves this lie, well, I'm only one person. I can't do anything. The problems are too big. This is the hope that Paul offers us. This is the truth that Jesus shares. God's saving grace can save us from the maze of our own sin. If I can admit that I am dependent on God's grace, I am really not going to get myself out of this, then I can confess my sins freely. I don't have to be defensive. I can admit there are things, for example, about the black experience in the United States that I will never understand. I can be prepared to listen, to believe. I can release the things that I'm not doing or the things that I am so sure I cannot fix 
and focus on the things that I can. In the gospel, Jesus tells the twelve, whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Jesus uses the example of a cup of water. Just a cup of water. Paul tells us the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. It is a free gift given to us. Even in the midst of my own sin, my own blindness, my impatience, my desire for things to be simple. Eternal life, the willingness to see evil with the eyes of God who sees all persons as infinitely valuable. The courage to address evil where it is. The confidence that there is nothing, even my own inadequacy, that God's power cannot defeat. The author Thomas Merton puts his prayer for the grace of God this way. My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end. Nor do I really know myself. And the fact that I think that I am following your will does not mean that I am actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope that I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore will I trust you always, though I may seem to be lost and in the shadow of death. I will not fear, for you are ever with me, and you will never leave me to face my perils alone. Amen.
called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of companionship, encourage our relationships with our siblings in Christ. Bless our conversations, shape our shared future, and give us hearts eager to join in a festal shout of praise. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow to provide all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be attuned to where earth is crying out. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy is great. God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, meet hate with love, and welcome one another as we would welcome you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of care, accompany all who are in deepest need. Comfort those who are sick, lonely, or abandoned. Strengthen those who are in prison or awaiting trial. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. We pray for those who have asked us to do so, remembering Jan, Evie, Alma, Janice, Charlotte, Stephen, Mark, Brandon, Michael, Bob, Perry, Larry, Cindy, Artie, Marianne, Helen, Mark, Catherine, Keith, Pat, Eileen, Sis, Tony, David, Jan, Peggy, Connie, Patty, Jeff, Diane, Bob, Carol, Joyce and the Sofa family, Natalie and Brandon, Sherry and her dad, Peggy and her family, Sue's family and friends, those who travel, those who serve in the military, in law enforcement, and as first responders, and all who seek the comfort of God's love that we now know either silently or aloud. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, you make us your church in the power of the Holy Spirit, and nothing can contain your powerful grace. We treasure your presence with us in word and meal, song and prayer. Be with us in these days when gathering together is not possible. When we must be apart for reasons of safety, we trust that you surround us with your sheltering wings. We pray for all those who are afflicted by COVID-19 and for those who care for them. Give us courage to face these days not with fear, but with compassion, concern, and acts of service, loving our neighbors as ourselves. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. We pray for an end to racism and prejudice in all forms. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred that infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love. And through our struggle and confusion, work to accomplish your purposes on earth so that in your good time, every people and nation may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of community, we give thanks for this congregation. Give us passion to embrace your mission and the vision to recognize where you are leading us. Teach us how to live more faithfully with each other. Hear us, O God. Your mercy mercy is great. God of love, you gather in your embrace, Mary Ann and all who have died. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and all those too deep for words through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Our Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Neither life, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen.